Hey guys, it's Hayes with CheatCheatPros.com. I know I said I wasn't going to do a betting video today, but the guys in the chat got me pumped up on a couple NBA games, so I said, hey, let's go ahead and pull up the cheat sheet and run through. I think there's seven games tonight, so let's go ahead and just do an NBA breakdown game by game real quick using our cheat sheet, and then I'll give you my three favorite plays as we go through. Um, so let's go ahead and start here at the top. As always, when you come down here to the bet tab, click in the home team and then you can scroll through and pick your team. We're going to start at the top and just work our way down. So number one, my first favorite play is Indy. So I was shocked to see this over my lunch break. I glanced at the lines. I wasn't even planning on looking today and I saw Indy plus one and a half after they just beat Boston. I was shocked that they were a dog at Orlando, so my first play that I like is going to be Indy plus one and a half, or I'm just going to take the money line. If I lose by a point, I'm fine with that. If you want to take a look and see what our differences are, these two boxes are the ones you want to pay attention to. If you're new, this is going to give you our main model projections. We have Indy minus 12 with a projection sc projected score of 120 to 108. Here, if you don't want to look at numbers and you're not good at math, just look at these two. The top is going to be the side, the bottom is going to be the total. If it says lean under, I usually just stay away from it unless you want to do some additional research. But if it says over by almost anything, that's a way I try to find a play. And then our differences, this says Indy by 14. How we come up with that is our model has minus 12, they're getting plus one and a half. That's 13 and a half, and it's a little more than that. It rounds up to 14, so it's a 14 point different than Vegas spread. We're looking at games with a difference of six, seven, eight, nine, somewhere in that range. Those are ones that you should look into. But for this, I love taking a shot on Indy. They are not fantastic by any means. I think they were three and seven over the last 10 games against the spread, but. They just beat Boston here 128 to 107 by 21 points. I almost live bet Boston in that game, but I wasn't watching it, so I decided to stay away from it. Another thing to keep in mind is look at the total here. Now, we have it going under roughly about 229. Total is 231, and it's up to 232 and a half right now. But look at these recent totals, 235, 254, 247, 249, 233, 245, and then the same thing over here on the Orlando side, 230, 239, 232, 237. So I was kind of shocked to see that, and when I was doing my research, I noticed that Indy is on a 13-2 overrun, and Orlando was on an 8-4 overrun, and the matchup between these two, the last nine games, the total's gone over eight times. So I haven't played that yet, but that was very interesting to me. So let's go on to game number two. We have Charlotte at Milwaukee. So Eric in the chat, congratulations. You're the first one to identify this play. I wasn't really paying attention because I wasn't going to do anything today. But I, I saw some chat talk about Charlotte being the lock of the day. And so when I was tinkering through the cheat sheet and looked at it, I was like, all right, well, we actually have Charlotte minus four. And again, we're not saying they're going to win by four, but we're just saying, hey, this is a rough spread so we have a huge difference here of Charlotte by 15 so looking at Eric's play Charlotte was getting 10 and a half so I was kind of intrigued at that so when I started looking in the game what was interesting is these two teams played this year on January 10th and January 8th and Charlotte won both games they beat uh, Milwaukee 103 to 99 and 114 to 106 and now they're catching 10 and a half points so I thought that was interesting now they have been struggling recently. They're only two and eight in their last 10. But our model does like a play here on Charlotte. And when I'm looking at their recent games, this goes, they've only got two games since returning from the break. They beat Toronto bad, 125 to 93. And then they didn't do real good against Detroit. They kept it within a one point game. But then these three games right here, they only lost by four, six, and seven. And that was to Miami, Memphis, and Minnesota. So that was phenomenal. They were inside that 10 and a half spread easily, and then they blew Detroit out by 22. So Charlotte's starting to pick it up, play a little bit better. We had a run here where they were just getting annihilated, but it looks like they're turning a corner, so I don't mind taking a little stab with a unit play on Charlotte plus 10 and a half. That would be my second play. 
Uh, Milwaukee has not been doing good. They're kind of falling off of a cliff. They've lost four of the last five games, beating only Indiana, who's a terrible road team. Real good at home, but we're going to go with them tonight. But they beat Indiana by nine. They didn't even pummel them. Like, they beat them by nine. So Charlotte's catching ten and a half. And then they lost by 24 to Phoenix. They lost by 15 to Portland. I don't know how that happened. And then they played a good game, lost by three to Philly. And then they lost by three to Brooklyn. So I like taking the 10 and a half points here on Charlotte on the road. And let's go on to the next game. Toronto, Brooklyn. Um, I was leaning Brooklyn plus three and a half, but Kyrie's out for this game. If he was going to play, I was going to take a shot here on the Brooklyn money line just because Toronto's been so bad. Um, they've lost four of the last five games, and three of the last four games, they've lost by 27 or more points. 27 to Atlanta, 32 to Charlotte, and then 30 to the Pelicans. So I don't know how that happens, but without Kyrie, I'm probably just going to stay away from it for now. But it gives us some good player props on some of the Brooklyn shooters like Patty Mills and Seth Curry. One of those guys usually always goes over. And then going on, Sacramento at Toronto. Uh, don't have a play here. You can see our model. We have it pretty close. Difference of five. Um, I would lean Sacramento, but Sacramento's lost four straight games, and two of those were by were, well, pretty bad losses, 18 and 24 points to Denver and Brooklyn. And then OKC, they're coming off of a win against Indy, and then they lost to Phoenix, Spurs, and then they beat the Knicks. So kind of back and forth. Nothing I really love on that side. And then the game of the night, the Spurs and Memphis. So the side here, it seems like a lot of points uh, for the Spurs, eight and a half. So I would lean taking the Spurs. But what I like is a play on the over. So you can see our model has 238 and a half. This was 236. And I think we had 237 and a half. Yeah, 237 and a half with 98% of the cash on the over and 92% of the tickets on the over. I also like the over. The last two games since the All-Star break that San Antonio's played in, 262 and 310 points. And then for Memphis, we've had 226, 232, 242, 230, 240, 239, 244, 250. So they're both getting up there with a lot of points. And when doing some of my research, I found that the Spurs are on a 5-1 overrun and Memphis is on an 8-2 overrun. And the reason I like this over, typically I was like, that's a lot of points. I'm not going to touch it. But down here when we look at the pace, so to give you a quick math lesson, league average pace is about 102 to 102.5 possessions per game. Now, if you get two teams that are above that in pace, they kind of get, they go, it just goes fast back and forth. So if you got a team that's at 104 and a team that's 100, you could average it out and say, okay, it's going to be about league average 102 and come up with a projected score using your efficiencies. But like for this, like we're going to average it out. So we've got the Spurs playing about 109, which is the absolute fastest in the NBA right now. And Memphis at about 105. So what happens is, yeah, you can look and average those two out and say, okay, we're going to project this at 106 to 107. And that's fine. But typically what happens is, when you have the Spurs playing at 109, they're going so fast. Memphis against a normal team is 105. Well, you put them up against the 109, and all of a sudden, both of them are going up now. So one of the Roto models, it was an article RotoWire did years ago. They were saying if you take like the 109 minus 102, that gives you plus 7. And then you take 10, we'll say 105 minus 102, that gives you plus 3. Well, you take the plus 7, the plus 3, you put it together, get plus 10, you add that to 102, and that gives you plus 112. So that gives you 112 possessions. Now, I found that to be a little extreme, but just to give you an idea, if you're running a, a certain type of model, I mean, this could really skyrocket the game. But again, I think Vegas pegged it pretty good, about 237, 238. I like it to go over 240. Anytime I can make up an excuse or justify an over to feel good about it, I'm going with the over. So that is my third favorite play today is the Memphis San Antonio Spurs over 237 and a half is what I got it at right now. Uh, let's take a look at the last two games real quick. Minnesota at Cleveland. So Cleveland, eh, they've kind of been up and down. They've lost three of four. They're one and one since coming back from the break. They haven't done anything really good. I mean, 
They lost to Detroit, who's not a good team. They beat a bad Washington team. Um, without their point guards, they've really struggled. Minnesota is where I would lean in this matchup. Um, Minnesota's been kind of up and down since coming back from the All-Star break. They're 1-1. One and one. Uh, They managed to beat Memphis by 5, which is a very impressive win. But then they got beat by 31 against Philadelphia. So a little bit up in the air. I don't have a dead set lean that I'm going with tonight. I would lean Minnesota, but again, I don't love it. And then the last game, Chicago at Miami. This is one of the games I'm really excited to kind of see how it plays out. I hope it's on TV. I haven't looked. Um, but YouTube TV, we get lots of NBA games. So Miami opened at Memphis minus, or Miami minus four. We have Miami minus five. So our model doesn't have a definite play. We have a total of 224.6. Their total is actually 225. So we're right there in that ballpark. Looking at the recent games, Chicago's been phenomenal. They lost only to Memphis. Prior to that, they won a bunch of games in a row. And then Miami, I mean, the same thing. They've won eight of the last nine games, losing only to Dallas. So this should be a good uh, matchup. Looking at the prior wins, I think a lot of these had trended kind of under the total. But again, I don't have a side either way. I would probably take the points or the money line in this spot because I think these teams are pretty evenly matched. But anyways, let's go ahead and wrap this up for Monday, the 28th of February. My favorite plays are going to be Indy Moneyline, Memphis, San Antonio over 237.5, and then take a shot on Charlotte plus 10.5.